Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second segment in Chapter 16 entitled Mechanism of Injury. All right, let's get started. During the scene size up, oh, as always, this is Keith Wimmeyer with Wayne County EMS. During the scene size up, try to determine the nature of the patient's problem. A trauma patient is one who has experienced an injury from an external force. In trauma situations, look for the mechanism of injury. What caused that injury? A medical patient is one whose condition is caused by an illness. In medical situations, try to determine the nature of the patient's illness. So we look, at, we look for an MOI or an NOI, mechanism of injury or nature of illness. Mechanism of injury refers to the way in which an injury occurs and forces involved in producing that injury. Kinetic energy is the energy of the motion. I'm sorry, of motion. The amount of kinetic energy an object has depends on the mass, which is the weight, and the speed, which is the velocity of the object. Kinematics is the science of analyzing the, me the mechanism of injury and predicting injury patterns. The amount of an injury is determined by the type of energy applied, how quickly the energy is applied, and to what part of the body the energy is applied. If the um, energy source is kinetic, such as mechanical energy, for example, uh, types examples of kinetic energy include motor vehicle collisions, motorcycle crashes, firearms, falls, or assaults. Thermal energy sources include heat, steam, and fire, and radiant energy sources include ray of light from sun rays, sound waves from explosions, electromagnetic waves such as X-ray exposure, and radioactive emissions such as nuclear leaks. They may encounter chemical energy, which may be plant or animal toxins or chemical substances, and electrical energy, which includes lightning, exposure to wires, sockets, or plugs. Survey the scene and talk to the patient, family, and bystanders to determine what the mechanism of injury was. Blood trauma is any me mechanism of injury that occurs without actual penetration of the body. Examples include motor vehicle collisions, falls, sports injuries, and assaults with blunt objects, such as a baseball bat, or in this picture's case, a tire iron. Blood trauma produces injury first to the body surface and then to the body's contents. <clears throat> this results in compression and or stretching of the tissue beneath the skin. The amount of energy depends on the length of time of compression, the force of compression, and the area compressed. Penetrating trauma is any mechanism of injury that causes a cut or piercing of the skin. Examples include gunshot wounds, stab wounds, and blast injuries. Penetrating trauma usually affects organs and tissues in the direct path of the, wound object, of the wounding object. In an MVC, three separate impacts occur as kinetic energy is transferred. The vehicle strikes an object. The occupant collides with the interior of the vehicle. Interior elements include a seatbelt, airbags, and dashboard. Internal organs collide with, the organ, with other organs, muscles, bones, or other structures inside the body. The, lung, the lungs, brain, liver, and spleen are particularly vulnerable to trauma. And a fourth impact may occur if loose objects in the vehicle become projectiles. And this goes back to Newton's law of motion. An object in motion stays in motion unless out acted upon by an outside force. So if, you're driving, if your patient's driving long, they are in motion, <clears throat> and then they are abruptly stopped by a telephone pole. Well, the vehicle first is stopped. The patient will continue to go until they are stopped by what? Exactly, a seatbelt, an airbag, or a dashboard. So now the patient is stopped by those, but the organs will continue to go until they are stopped by bone, skin, motor vehicle crash is classified by the type of impact. 
five types of impact include head-on or frontal collision, lateral collision, a rear-end collision, rotational, or a rollover. The injuries that result depend on the type of collision, the occupant's position inside the vehicle, and the use or non-use of restraint systems. In the frontal impact, such as a head-on collision, the vehicle stops and the occupant continues to move forward by one of two pathways. This is often referred to as a down and under or up and over, in which case they go down and under this, the dashboard or up and over the dashboard. The down and under pathway may, seem, may be seen when the occupant is not wearing a lap and shoulder restraint system or when the occupant is wearing only the shoulder harness and a lap belt is not used. Um, you'll see the victim's knees impact the vehicle's dashboard. Predictable injuries include knee dislocations, patella fractures, fractures of the femur or hip, often bilaterally, posterior dislocations of the hip, The up and over pathway may be seen when the occupant is not wearing a lap and shoulder restraint system or when the occupant is wearing only a lap restraint, not the shoulder harness. Um, the victim's upper body strikes the steering wheel. Possible injuries include head, chest, abdomen, pelvis, and spinal injuries. Although mechanism of injury is important, it is not the only factor to consider when assessing a trauma patient, determining whether or not they are a priority patient. For some patients, the risk of significant injury is increased because of their age or pre-existing medical conditions, despite what might appear to be a minor mechanism of injury. In some EMS systems, other factors by designated priority status are considered in addition to the mechanism of injury. These include anatomy, physiology, and patient factors. Although mechanism of injury, oh, sorry. Adults with will typically turn away if they are about to be struck by an oncoming vehicle. This results in injuries to the side or back of the body. A child will usually face an oncoming vehicle. This results in injuries to the front of the body. Falls are a common mechanism of injury. Factors to consider in a fall are the height from which the patient fell, the patient's weight, the surface the patient landed on, the, patient, the part of the patient's body that struck first. When we talk about bicycle crashes, most severe and uh, fatal bicycle injuries involve head trauma. Other injuries associated with bicycle crashes include trauma to the face, limbs, and abdomen, usually from striking the handlebars. Most common bicycle crashes include the following, riding into a street without stopping, turning left or swerving into traffic that is coming from behind, running a stop sign, or riding against the flow of traffic. When we talk about the nature of illness, um, the nature of illness describes the medical condition that resulted in the patient calling 911. Examples include fever, difficulty breathing, chest pain, headache, and vomiting. Attempt to determine the nature of illness by talking to the patient, family, coworkers, and bystanders. If the patient is unresponsive, look to the family members or others at the scene as a source of information. While in the patient's home, look around you. Note the orderliness, cleanliness, and safety of the home. Look at the general impression or appearance of the patient and other family members. Check if they are if there are any medical devices, supplies that are that the patient may use, such as home oxygen equipment, a breathing machine, dressing, bandages, or walk. At the scene, you should take appropriate standard precautions, evaluate scene safety, and determine the mechanism of injury or the nature of the patient's illness. After talking, taking these steps, determine the number of patients. The need for additional resources is based on the correct count of patients at any emergency scene. The number of patients for a medical call in which the patient complains of chest pain may be the, an easy answer. However, a rollover accident with multiple persons involved may be more difficult to assess. Be alert for patients in addition to the 
the first patient you observe on the scene. Look for clues that other patients may be present. Clues might include toys, diapers, bottles, school books, purse, or child safety seat. Ensure you look around the scene, not just at the scene, so, because some patients may become may be ejected from the vehicle. While waiting for the arrival of more resources, determine the patients who must be treated first. This process, the process of sorting patients by the severity of their illness or injury is called triage. Determine if additional help is needed at the scene. Contact the dispatchers as soon as you recognize the need for additional help. Some concerns uh, may include traffic control, crime, or violent scene, in which case you may need law enforcement personnel, complex extrication, in which case you may need fire department or specialized rescue teams, hazardous materials, in which case you may need hazmat teams, confined space, in which case you may need confined space rescue teams, swift water rescue, in which case you'll need swift water rescue teams, high angle rescue, in which case you'll need high angle rescue teams, trench rescue, in which case you'll need trench rescue teams, down power lines, in which case you'll need the utility company, Natural gas leaks, in which case you need fire department and utility company. And dangerous pets, you may need to notify animal control. Mass casualty incidents, may, you may need to utilize all of your local resources, as well as state and federal resources, including Kentucky Emergency Management Agency, and you may need to go up the chain to FEMA and possibly the National Guard. This concludes uh, Chapter 16, entitled Scene Size Up.